Okay. Let me see here. Um, all right. So, I mean, like looking through the director's notes um, and other other things, just researching some things um, that, that you've written or that you said about the films really stood out. I think one of the sentences was um, the movies are about buildings and all the transparent, transparent people who work and build their lives in them. So that mm -hmm. like, yeah, that was like a really, really intriguing um, concept. Could you talk a little bit more about transparent people and that, that whole idea? Well, that, that, uh, that word of transparent people actually came from a, a book uh, from an Angolan writer called Onjaki. And it's called the transparent people. I think in, in, in English, they translated the book to a hollow city. Uh, and I, I thought that was the right word to describe some of those uh, citizens and workers that, uh, that live in those buildings and work on those buildings. I myself uh, lives in many different buildings here in downtown Rwanda. I'm living on my fifth one now since I left my, my parents' home uh, 15 years ago. So, and they're very similar to what you see in the, in the film. And, uh, and for me, it was, it was not a very unknown universe. It was something that was, and not only to me, but to the whole team, uh, the director of photography and writer of, uh, of the script as well with me, Eric Claver, he also lived next to that building where we shot. The composer, Lin Frazan, lived very near to that building a couple of years ago. So everyone was knew the environment or the location or the setting where the story was taking place. And also the characters, you know, uh, because although this is a fiction film, it's very based on real people on real locations. And we, we wanted to give, at least in terms of the stories I'm trying to, to tell, I wanted to give the perspective uh, that it's not very often given in, in terms of cinema at least in Angola, uh, to main characters. Uh, and I always like to tell this story because it started during the casting process of the film where a lot of the casting agencies didn't want the actors to come to, to do an audition for, for a role of a security guard or a housemaid because people, we, we kind of building a society that thinks that's beneath, you know, a, you know what should be a main character of a film even when we were shooting the film there were people on the street that would come to me and ask me why the security guard is in front of the camera i was like he's the main character why is the main character he's like because it's his story it's his from his point of view so uh and and i think that we need uh to see more stories from that perspective because uh it's they those are people that work in our in our in our society. There are those are the majority, and they're seeing, they're watching, and people tend to not see them, and people tend not to think about them, even when we're talking about policies uh, in the city. So it, it was an important aspect to mention. That's why it's also written on on, on the on the writer's note. Yeah. Oh, great! And that's yeah, that's really really fascinating, and I think it really adds a lot. I mean, it shows how familiar um, like that environment is to the film, the filmmakers, I think, in a sense. I mean, as you watch a lot of uh, particularly films that aspire to an African aesthetic. And it's like mm -hmm. they get the same materials, they get whatever, but if it's not lived in, it just doesn't feel mm -hmm. real at all. And so like, um, it was really, it was incredible to see how real some of these very familiar spaces felt in your film. Um, mm -hmm. And so I was also curious about the approach to that like was that a lot of that improvised uh, when you say you work with people that you knew how did that process um, how did that work uh, it's it was the it, it was kind of both worlds because i i've i i tend to 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 go to a project without everything almost set in stone i like to have my my shot list my storyboard my script everything but my, my, my good partner in this film, which was Eric Laver, the director of photography, he tends to go a little bit different on the opposite side. He, he likes to improvise, he likes to work on set. So uh, we had to find a common ground. Although we had a script, 
uh, we work with the actors and rehearse on location with them. And once we rehearse with the actors on the location, that would go into the script. So, and, and, and for me, it was interesting because we work with non-actors as well. There's, there's a couple of non-actors in the film. And for, we were very lucky to find non-actors that after they do a scene, and I'm saying, I really love what you did. Let's do a couple of takes more. And we do 10 takes and they still do the same, which for me shows, shows me there's a lot of talent also hidden. <laughs> and you don't have to be an actor to repeat that. Uh, so it was, it, was, uh, it was a process also because you always tend you know, to, to, there's a lot of African films, there are a lot of films that portray Africa in a very exotic way, and we didn't want to fall on that, on that gap. But I think we didn't overthink it too much, you know? We didn't want to like, okay, we are in Golands, let's just do it the way we, we really think we would do, or let's just, you know? And I think we are not just influenced uh, because sometimes you we tend to, to talk about cinema with so many nationalities and with borders, like, you know, this is how African cinema should be, or this is how European cinema should be. And I think that one of, one of the things, at least for me, and, and, and also for the director of photography, we are very influenced by very different filmmakers uh, from Asia to Eastern Europe or, you know, South America. And I think that that, that shows us a little bit, uh, something that is broad, I, I think would be, bad or at least uh, wouldn't work so much if we tend to follow like a Hollywood style to the story uh, and then we would fall into that gap of you know very uh, exotic very you know cliche and I think we 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 kind of even when we're talking about films that we like to watch we kind of go on a different path so that's why I think it, it work on that level you know that's, that's really really interesting so I, I want to talk about the idea a little bit uh, like it seems, it's like it's a really inspired idea because air conditioners are that much a really familiar thing, but that like ha is so has so much you know um, potential uh, metaphorical potential. And so I want to talk about how that idea came about about centering air conditioners. The, the 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 main the main thing was always the security guard, like from its its perspective. And then we we're trying to find some sort of something that represented this whole tension that we live in the city, this whole tension that this character uh, carries with him. And I think the air conditioner was like the perfect uh, symbol for it, you know? Uh, sometimes it's uh, like, we, we could have used it, a, 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 you know, a generator or, you know, a water pump thing, but the air conditioner, I think because it's, it's such, it, it's, it's just a, an object that it's like hanging on, on, on the buildings. And at the same time, deals with air, and it's something that you know controls the air. So I think all these elements to it, it just became something that like, okay, this is the perfect object to represent this this story. And also at the same time, the the it, it's it's taking a little pause and looking around. You know, uh, it's like these these objects are around us every day. Uh, and they also represent a lot of the class distinctions that you see, you know, it's when we're talking about air conditions, we're talking about downtown, we're talking about buildings, we're not talking about the majority of, of the people that live in Rwanda. So that was also a very important element to us. And even, even for the actors, like the, the two characters, they, 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 they don't come from living in buildings. So they were very surprised by the dynamics of a building. Yeah, so it for us was just it, it was not just a movie that we made for uh, international audiences. It was primarily a movie for us to show and see how we are living, how we are dealing with a lot of stuff, not only in Luanda but outside of Luanda also, because it's it's not the, the, the living in a building downtown, even though it's an old building, it's not something that it's a common experience for everyone, and we wanted to show that in a story in a film more than trying to do kind of a superhero film or anything like that right yeah and i can tell you um there are moments there are kind of uncanny moments there because there's so much of 
clearly now so much of Dar es Salaam in Luanda, like so many points of connection, even something as simple as like a gas canister and the way that it was just like, <laughs> the film was just like, yes, I know that, you know, I know that. Right, and this little stools and the like, you know, sometimes it's just like a cup of tea. They were like really, really nicely. Um, you really brought all of that to life in a in a really strong way that created an affinity, I think, between certainly in me between the, like um, a city that I've never been in, but like an like an understanding of you know of all the similarities. Um, and another thing that I'm really interested in is just your yeah the portrayal of two main characters. And the way that they were dealing um, with, with 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 this issue, with this, I guess, a mission almost, um, was kind of interesting. Um, I I think it's it sort of spoke to a little bit about, um, I mean, people who live with disruptions every day and the creative ways that they deal with these disruptions, and like the fact that um, everybody else, or like I guess the, the boss characters or those characters, are very shocked that something could go wrong in their life. Um, and then uh, those, those characters are like less confused and more creative about the potential of, of solving problems. So, That's and true. like, yeah. And so like, a lot of the film is about solving problems and is about finding solutions. So I, I don't like, was that intentional? Um, like sort of showing some of the creative ways in which people uh, fill in the gaps or when they've been sort of left behind. Yeah, I, I, uh, for me, and I think uh, that's that's a very common experience. Like, it seems like the state uh, is kind of uh, a, it's it leaves people to 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 kind of on a survival mode. They they do not participate. They do not do what the state's supposed to do. You know, in terms of like providing water, providing electricity, providing you know safe housing, all that. So the citizens, uh, they have to take that into responsibility, which is not their responsibility to take. And I think that problem solving thing that you're talking, it's something, it's a very common experience here in, in Luanda, you know? And, and some days more than others, it seems like you, you're jumping from a problem solving situation uh, to another, you know? It's like, oh, it's the water. No, it's the electricity. No, it's 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 the building that is falling apart. No, it's it's something else. So I I, I do wanted to get that feeling uh, of a city that uh, that has that that issue, and I and and we thought that the air conditioners would be like the the, the perfect thing, although it's a very fiction thing. It, it, it you know it could happen with some other subject, you know, and and also I wanted to portray. With the, the with the three different characters, that kind of different approach to it. You know, you have the main character who is very uh, he goes with the wind. You know, he does what he's told to do. He doesn't want to think too much. And then you have the the housemaid, which is Azina. She she's just pushing forward. She doesn't want to waste time talking. She wants to move forward to the next day. And then you have the the old guy at the shop, which is Mr. Mino, with someone who's stuck in the past, but at the same time thinks that you know. Uh, we will find some sort of better way or solution if we go back and we preserve some something from the past. And I think these three characters, when they are together, either two of them or the three of them, they kind of uh, inspire each other. You know, the housemaids st start thinking and daydreaming about you know her father and and her old life. Uh, the security guard kind of gets. Uh, uh, enthusiastic about solving this problem and the old guy kind of finds like okay i might have some replacement here to carry on with my work with the security guard so i i, I wanted to get these different approaches to to this uh survival mode so or problem solving situation that i think it's a very common experience in you know african cities and especially in rwanda you know Great. And all of this is held together by a really great soundtrack. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like really yes, yes. Um, so uh, and, okay, could you talk about that experience working with, um, you know, um, with the musician to create the score and also the songs that you chose to go with it? Yeah, uh, Aline is a very, uh, very uh, established uh, Angolan uh, uh, artist. She has already four albums. 
this is this was her first uh, film composing experience, which for me was like the best, and uh, we are very uh, happy and surprised. But she was involved in, in the very early stages uh, while we were still developing the script, and also, like I said, she she lived in next to one of those buildings, so she knows very well the buildings as well. She knows what the characters we're talking about. And I think what made these soundtracks so so good because everyone talks about it, it's that it's not just a soundtrack that is following the film. It's a soundtrack that you know gives a, a, a new layer to the characters, a new layer to the story. You know, when you hear the song while Matasedo is daydreaming around the city, you kind of hearing you know what kind of man is that person? What kind of what happened to him? Uh, so it's it's another layer of storytelling which I think. It's something that uh, it's very important for me when we're talking about filmmaking, because sometimes we tend to focus too much on the narrative or just the actors or even the photography. And I think as filmmakers, we have this very, very difficult job of trying to uh, bring all the elements to, 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 to work together almost as seamlessly, you know? And I, this is not a story that is very focused on narrative and more on, on the perspective, on, on, on the feeling of, of the security guard and going on a journey through, through the buildings, through the streets, and, and, and through what, what this almost absurd situation uh, that is going on. And I think music, it's it kind of raised the bar of, of the storytelling, not even of the film, but like the storytelling got better because of the music to it. So it's something that uh, we are very uh, happy the first time I like the first time I, I heard the, 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 the first score of the film, like the, the, the song that you hear in the beginning credits uh, with those amazing photographs by Kafushi. For me, it was like, this is perfect because I was looking for some sort of introduction to the city without showing the city in the film because I wanna, we wanted to get stuck into the, into the building and the street and the shop. We didn't want to show like a drone uh, shot of the city. Uh, so I wanted people, once they got into the movie, they already knew the rhythm of Luanda. And I think the music in the beginning with those photographs, it kind of sets the tone. Okay, this is the kind of the environment this story is being told, you know? And for me, it was, that was one of the best surprises I had because I, it, it was something that I, I I didn't ask for that tone, but he, to Aline, but she she brought it in, and for me, it just worked perfectly. Yeah, yeah, no, it really did. Yeah, yeah. So um, the question is, um, is um, like some um, throughout the film, the city can be perceived as something antagonistic, and is um, is that what, what the, the that antagonism is it redeemable? Um, in any sense, either through through the characters, um, or is it some place that um, everybody's um, like sort of bound to to escape? Like the survival survival is only uh, escaping. Is there um, an alternative way, an alternative message, perhaps, of of addressing um, that sense of antagonism? Well, that, that's that's a very good question. That uh, actually. I've, I've been thinking a lot even for my next project <laughs> because uh, it's like uh, Luanda does have that tension. Luanda does have, and I, and I think it's not uh, specific to Luanda. Uh, I don't know Dar es Salaam, but I would love to, to visit one day. But I, I know that some cities have that tension and, and, and we as citizens of the city that were born and raised, we have kind of always a love and hate relationship to it. But in the end, it's, it's, we are talking about the possibilities, you know, how many people have the possibility of not living in Luanda, where everything is, you know, how many people uh, can uh, afford to go outside of Luanda. Uh, if any, even if you go to the countryside, the majority of the economic part of this, of this country is here. Uh, the cities, it's 8 million people. So, I think uh, we are kind of uh, uh, in terms of in terms of policy. I think there's a lot of responsibility that is not uh, taking care of it. You know, the country and the government and the state should be uh, 
should be taking care of, of you know, not only the city of Luanda, but also the rest of the country, providing ways of people, you know, moving outside of the of the city, not being stuck in the capital that doesn't have the right infrastructure to 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 provide for all the citizens, you know, and 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 it's something that uh, I I think we don't want it to to make it like a romantic thing of oh this is a very hard city to live in no we really want to address those issues and and it's not like oh look at that decaying building no this is a problem you know people shouldn't be living like that it's it's not it's not the right conditions to, to people to live like that and the other thing for us which was very important is like if you if you go down one street you will see all those beautiful it's not beautiful for me, but what the government think it's beautiful, like all those, you know, glass buildings looking like Dubai kind of thing. And, and they're normally the postcard of the city and they don't show the, the back, like the city that is behind it. And that city that is behind for many years, it was being pushed away, you know, uh, but due to the economic crisis that we're facing in the last five years now with COVID, it's even worse. It, it kind of like, people got stuck in it, you know? Uh, we still have like these glass buildings, but the, the old buildings are still there and people are still living there. So it's kind of like a, an awkward situation right now. But I think that the government, uh, at least the city government wants to push uh, people and old buildings away, you know, because they want to, to show, you know, everything nice and clean, everything very Western, everything very Dubai. And I think uh, that's an issue that we should take care of it, you know, how we're living in those old buildings, how we are dealing with each other in those old buildings, how come uh, uh, water doesn't get into the buildings, how come electricity doesn't get into the buildings. Like, so I, I, I think the, the film does raise those questions indirectly, uh, but it's also for me very important in terms of like uh, sharing the film as well with other African cities because I, like I said, it's not a very unique condition. You know, uh, I have friends in other uh, African countries and it's something that it's, it's very common. You know, the cities were brought in a very fast way. Governments were not able to catch up. A lot of people come to the capitals. So it's something that uh, I think we should share more in terms of solutions and what kind of solutions we can find together, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And certainly, um, Dar es Salaam is very similar. And actually, what's really interesting is um, the tension you described is actually can be centered on the air conditioner because they are, mm. we also have like, we have a lot of old buildings that are still very like nicely built and solidly built, um, which is like so much better airflow and it makes so much more sense. Um, but increasingly, yes. Um, the glass is taking over and it's like, it's all just, <laughs> I love that the yeah. glass is taking over. It's a good, <laughs> it's a good, it's a good sentence. Right. And so like, yeah, so that's very, that's another thing that makes like this, the, the metaphor that you use so relevant. Um, I don't know if there are any more questions. When we're talking about making films, the way we do it, we, we, we're not like big crew. We are very small crew and we want to pe get people involved because it's, it's a nice experience. It's, it's a cultural experience and it's something that you don't have uh, very often, you know? So uh, this building kind of, they were very open uh, to receive us, to let us shoot in the, in the apartments, uh, to have people work on the crew, to have people to be actors and for like almost 12 days. So for us, uh, it was important to kind of, not only build a community with, with, with the place we're shooting. And when we are talking about the place we're shooting, even with other projects, with our, with our collective, it's, it's very important, like the location, you know? Uh, even like at the end of the, 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 the shoot, we, we screened the film at the, at the rooftop of the building. And for me, it was kind of the closing moment, you know? Because the kids that, were, that show up in the film, uh, the people that were part of the crew, they're watching themselves on the screen. And, and for us, it was kind of the closure moment to it, you know. Wow. Um, so yeah. what, what, what's next um, for you and the production company? Well, right now we are just uh, uh, finishing shooting uh, Eddie Claver, which is the director of photography uh, of our air conditioner. We're finishing shooting his uh, first feature film as a director. And the way we're doing this, like 
uh, we are we are trying to make a, a film in, in in taking taking turns like we did our conditional which i directed now it is doing his own film uh, and we try to collaborate on each other's project like uh, i'm i'm editing it is film uh, so uh, this is kind of the way we're trying to it's not set in stone but it's something that we're trying to experiment to to keep us going because we cannot do everyone's project every year and even doing one project it takes a lot of effort for us uh, because we do not have, uh, you know, any state funds. We do not have like a minister of culture that is focused on on cinema or even in culture, to to say the truth. So uh, we do we do as as a collective and also as a production company, of course, we do a lot of commercial work to to be able to provide to do these projects for us. Uh, so the next film, it's it's uh, it's a this film that is probably is going to be coming out in the beginning of the next year. And we're very excited about it. Uh, I do not want to talk about my future projects yet, but uh, I'm still developing. Uh, so now as a collective, we're focused on it is film. And uh, one thing I, I would love to say as well is like, I'm very, I hope uh, soon I can come to visit because I was looking at what you guys doing there. And it seems like a, something very expiring uh, because we, we also would love to share like, we are screening our films uh, in our in our house uh, at the collective, uh, but we have this dream of having like a small theater, and we store it and work with it so we can do other screenings. Because one of the problems we have here is like all the theaters are in shopping malls and they only show you know American films, and we don't get to see you know African films. We don't get to see. Asian films and things that are more, you know, in touch or in, in connection to what, you know, what filmmaking or art should be. So I'm very excited. I'm also very happy to see that you guys screened the film of a good friend of mine, which is Jeremiah. Uh, I think, I think was, was one of the best, I, I, for me, it was the best film of last year. It's so I'm, I, it's an incredible, it's like, I, I, I tell him that it's going to become a classic on, on, on uh, African cinema. It's something that people will study. Uh, so uh, I'm very happy that you guys screened that film there. And I, I just wanted to say, please keep doing what you guys doing. And, uh, and I hope uh, once this whole pandemic is done, I, I can come, uh, if not to watch uh, films with you guys, to screen films from our collective and yeah, and share some experiences. Absolutely, we would we would love that. We would really really love that. Um, definitely, um, you are more than welcome. And um, as you said uh, about um, the, like to this is not a burial. I think the same with air condition that there is. This is a film that will be around for a long time. And really, many congratulations to you guys and the work you guys are doing as well, um, and the excitement and the passion that you have. And I do hope, yeah, that we'll find points of connection in the future and. We'll listen intently for anything that you guys are, are have out um, and we'll be ready to, to share it again here. So thank you for, for creating that experience for us. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Hey. Wonderful day has done. I just got a look at the day. Wonderful day has done. Wonderful day has done.